let me just introduce a uh, speaker for the second session. Um, Reverend Byung-Guk Yu mm. is the mobilization director of WAC International Mission Mobilization, and he was former uh, director of WAC International IMM and WAC Korea International, and he was a missionary in Gambia uh, more than 13 or 14 years, and he's now ready to challenge you uh, with a powerful message uh, according to his experience. It's your turn, young group. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I think it's your morning, time. Everyone. Yeah, it's your time in the morning, but here our time late afternoon in Korea. Anyway, you've been waiting for many days and many hours until I appeared as the last speakers, right? But anyway, uh, I'm sure many of you expected some great, great kind of message from me, but uh, I humbly confess that it may not be like what you expected. More likely, uh, missionary from Korea. Korea is not like uh, Kenya or like other Western countries. Korea is, uh, you know, the small Christian is not dominated. Before Christian come into Korea, almost 2000 years, we were predominated by Buddhism, by Confucianism, and even shamanism. So the hist history of the church, Christian history in Korea, is only 140 years, that old. So of course, I'm also, I'm uh, from non-believing family originally, and uh, grew up in mountain countryside. But anyways, before I share about my humble story, let me read our Bible text word, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. Okay. Yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. It was a very simple uh, <clears throat> for me. It's a very simple commitment. Even in Korea, quite many people are asking me, "How did you become missionary?" Yes, many people is a quite quite curious. How, as a Korean man, became a missionary to Africa? It was very simple, you know. As I wrote, as I read the Bible verse. 1 Corinthians 9, 16. It was many, many years ago in my 20s, mid-20s, or maybe early 20s, I would say. I was a, I was a university student. The one day, a friend of mine, he inquired, asked me to go with him. I said, where do you want to go? He said, World Mission Conference. I asked him, what is the World Mission Conference? He said, he doesn't know. He said, I don't know. But anyway, my church, the youth pastor asked me to come. So I humbly accompanied him to that venue. Around four or 500 people gathered, not knowing what was going on that evening. So in front of the congregation, there's a young man stood. And he was sharing about, he was talking about world mission. And he was, he was, he, he hung the world map in, on, on the top of pulpit. He was pointed the world map with a long stick. Korea, neighboring country Japan, and neighboring country China, or even neighboring country to Philippines or Thailand, or even India 
all those countries. And he was uh, simply, he was challenging to the congregation. He said, war to Korean church. If we do not preach the gospel to other nations. War to Korean church. If we do not send missionaries to other nations. It was a very, very simple challenge. I, myself, I never thought about world mission. I've never heard about world mission. It was a totally new, new world to me. But that time he explained to me why. He said, in Korea, there are hundred and hundred thousand churches in Korea and 100,000 believers, millions of believers in Korea. Yet, our neighboring countries, there are no churches. Maybe he was wrong, but anyway, he just emphasized that way. He said, there's a no church, no believers. We can keep this gospel only for ourselves. We must share this good news, this gospel with other people. So that's why, he quoted this Bible verse, what to Korean church if we do not send missionaries to other nations. And he said, what to you if you do not obey this command? Wow. It was so quite shocking to me as a young man, as a young Christian man. I realized it was the Lord was speaking to me. So without hesitation, I knelt. I knelt down on the floor of the church. And I simply responded, here am I. Lord, here am I, send me. It was my commitment, not knowing exactly what was mission, not knowing what was mission in life, but only one principle, we as a Christian Christians, we were supposed to share this good news with other nationals, other nations. So I simply responded to this calling. Lord, here am I, Lord, send me. It was my response. Then after I did theoretical training three years without, without hesitation, I decided to obey, to go as a missionary to overseas. So first people I was supposed to share about my vision, my future plan was my parents. I went to my parents' home and uh, very humbly I sat down before them and I shared about my vision. especially my mom, my mother, as she heard what I was saying, and she started to tears, tears and tears. And she said, my son, do you have to go away from me? He, she asked me again, do you really have to go away from me? as there are many, many unevangelized areas here in Korea. There are, there are many work, work opportunities as a pastors, as an evangelist here in Korea. Why do you, why have you decided to go away from us? I know why she was saying that. She was a good Christian. She was a good Christian lady. Even though she was a good Christian lady, she didn't want me to go away from her. She was the first believer in whole villages in my hometown. I remembered when I was childhood, I did not know how this, how does, how this become missionary. Uh, sorry, how did this become Christian? She started to go to church every Sunday morning and evening. Every Wednesday evening, 
every Friday evening and every day early morning, she went to the church to pray and to worship the Lord. As she was the first believer in whole village, I remembered how hard it was. My father, that time he was not a believer at all. He was a strong against to my mom. And every time she came from church, she came home. I don't even want to remember that evening, that date. It was a very, very difficult time to my mom. Even as a young son, it was also, I remember that scene vividly in my, in my memory. So that's why the time I entered theological seminary, it was just a joy to my mom. She started to share every church members. She started to share everybody in our villages saying that, do you know my son, he is going to become a pastor. You know, he is going to become a pastor. He is going to become a pastor, then I will be a pastor's mom. And also I will be a praying mom for my son and I will kneel down in my son's church and day and night I will pray for my son. It was her hope, it was her vision, it was her dream, it was her life in a sense. Then suddenly she was informed her beloved son is going away from her. Remember how hard it was. That time, I recalled the word of God. She just says, anyone who loves his father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Wow. I had to decide, should I obey my mom or should I obey the Lord's calling? So without hesitation, I decided to leave away from my mom. And then secondly, I talked to my church senior pastor who is the, in the picture, the center man. In the circle, there was me, but in the center, he was my church senior pastor. So I asked him to call all the church elders, church leadership. And church leadership, they gather together. And with me, I shared about my vision. I talked to my church leadership saying that from the beginning of my ministry in this church, I clearly, clearly informed you I was a missionary candidate. As soon as I finished my theological seminary, I would go and I would become a missionary. So now, as I finished my theological tr training, now it's time for me to leave. It's time for me to become missionary. Then my church senior pastor and leadership, they advised me to stay with them two or three more years saying that because our church, we built a church building, we constructed church buildings with a large, large amount of money. And because of that, we had a large amount of bank, bank debt. So we have to clear it first. Pastor says, it, it may take two or three more years to clear them up. Then, I promise you, as a, your pastor, as your senior pastor, our church, we would support you. But you know, at that time, my heart was burning. My heart was burning with a passion to go to mission field. So I talked to my pastor, pastor, 
as I finished my theoretical seminary, there's no reason for me to stay any more years in Korea. I won't go now. I need to go to Britain before I become missionary. I need some basic missionary training in Britain. I need to go. Then my third church senior pastor, he was a bit annoyed with me. He said, didn't, didn't I tell you? If you go now, my church, you would not support you at all. We may not be able to support any amount of money. I said, that's okay, pastor, but I will, I will leave. Then the pastor was very, very annoyed with me. He said, okay, then you go ahead. So they gave me some, not large, but some amount of farewell gift. And uh, my wife, that time, when I finished, my theoretical seminary, I was already family head of two children. So we counted how much money we had in our pocket, in our bank. Even that time, of course, we didn't have bank account in my pocket, how much money we had. We purchased our family ticket to Britain. So no support at all, even single dollars from Korea. And the money, the remaining money, there was not much. We decided to go to Britain. In my pockets, as a family, go to Britain. In my pockets, I remembered 3,800 US dollars. That was all I had to go to Britain. People thought we had large amount of money somewhere, but no, that was not true. We did not have any money in our pockets. There was only we had 3,800 US dollars. So I called my friend who was in Britain, who was studying in Britain, my best friend, one of my best friends, anyway, I called him, I'm coming to Britain for missionary training. He asked me what time, I gave him my arrival times. So we, as a family, we arrived in London Heathrow Airport. There we met my friend who came to meet us in the airport. When he saw my family, my wife and my two kids, my two girls, when he, when he saw us, he was very much surprised. He said, oh, my friend, you have come as a whole family. I said, yes. And then he said, okay, did you have enough money to study and to live in Britain? I said, not really. I said, oh my goodness, can I ask how much have, have you brought here? I said, well, in my pockets, I have less than 4,000 US dollars. That's all I have. And my, my friend, he was, he was so annoyed with me. You must be crazy, boy. Did you not know this place? This is UK, England, with that amount of money. $3,800. You cannot survive here in Britain even more than two or three months. Oh my goodness, you must be crazy. So then my friends, he said, where are you going from here? They asked me. Of course, we didn't know anything about in Britain. Only I know him personally, my friend. Then I said, well, we have no idea. 
He said, you are crazy. You are crazy man. Such a reckless person. And he said, anyway, let's go out of here. He took us out from the airport and he carried our luggages and he went ahead of us and he took us to his humble plot. He was, he rented Indian family, you know, the first floor, small flat. He rented it as a single student. He saw my family of four. He saw my wife. He saw my two girls. He was so frustrated, so frustrated. And uh, he let us use his bed. There was, this was his bed actually. You see, it was a regular double bed. We, frankly speaking, till that time, no, no, my family, we had ever slept on the bed because Korean bedroom is just like, you know, Korean bedroom is just like this. This is Korean bedroom. We, we slept on the floor, clean floor and covering with, you know, blanket and under the mattress. So we never slept on the bed. And then he gave us a bed, this bed. Oh my goodness, we didn't know how to sleep, how to use this bed with one blanket. We did not king size bed, not queen size either. It was a regular double bed size. And then first night, my wife and we decided to sleep this way. Well, with one blanket in between us, two girls slept in between us, but it was a so cramped it, so cramped it, because of only regular double bed size. And then second night, we need create different ways how to sleep. So second night, we slept this way. But, but the, the bed was too narrow. So I was much, much longer than the bed width. So that night also, we could never go to sleep. And then third night, another way we created, let's sleep this way. So myself and my wife slept that end, that direction, and my two girls slept this direction using one blanket. It was okay. But during the night, suddenly I heard something drop from the bed. My young, younger daughter, my youngest one, I kicked, I kicked her from the bed. She was kicked by me and she dropped on the floor. And she screamed in the midnight. And I put her bed and then as a family head, I could not go to sleep. I knelt by the bed. Lord, we have come here just followed by your calling. But the money we brought, sooner or later, it will be run out. As there is no support coming from Korea, as no one can help us here in Britain, we alone are here. Lord, we don't know what to do. If you have called us, Lord, tell us, help us. It was a so desperate prayer. Every night I prayed like this, Lord, help me. It was in my life, it was one of the most desperate times. I like to pray like this. I prayed and prayed. You know what happened? By God's grace, middle of nowhere, my family, no support coming from Korea. But the Lord 
provided all our need in Britain, not only for three days, not only for three months, not only for one year. Faithful God, loving Father, our helper, he helped us. He provided us for three good years, living middle of nowhere. But the Lord was there as our Father, as our helper, as our provider. He was faithful God. From that time, I became very, very bored in a sense. In terms, in the area of finance, I become very bored. So, after three years of study and training, we have joined this organization called WEC International. It's the first Korean couple into this organization. We joined and we did WEC mission candidate orientation course and we became WEC missionaries. So our UK director advised us to go down to Africa. So I, tell, I talked to him, well, we never thought about Africa. We only, we've been praying for Indonesia. But the director called Nicholas, he said, why don't you go down by yourself? The country called Gambia, West Africa, small country. And why don't you go down by yourself as exploring trip? And then find out if that field, whether you can go you with your family or you can, you can give up to go. I said, yes, okay, I will. So I left my family back in UK and by myself, I went to Africa to as an exploring trip from Gateway Airport to the country called the Gambia, West Africa. It's not like a Kenya. Gambia is a small country, Muslim dominated. 90% of the populations, they are Muslims. And they're one of the poorest nations, economically, very, very poor countries. So I decided I flew from UK and then going down to Gambia, all the way down to Gambia. The, our, my plane was approaching to the Gambia. Captain announced, ladies and gentlemen, our plane is approaching Banjul International Airport. I thought it's a big airport, but it was very, very humble runway, very, very just only small, small runway, runway, and then very humble airport. And the the, the mission he came to welcome us from Shibano. He welcomed us. The time I landed. My step landed into Gambia in, in that, that runway. It was April 1985. Wow. The time I stepped onto the runway, I thought I was stepping under the fire. It was not just hot, it was a scorching heat. I start to blame myself. Oh my goodness. Is it a human being can survive here? <laughs> I start to blame myself. You stupid. You shouldn't have come here. Why did you come here? And then already all my body sweat and sweat and sweat. From that very moment, I decided I will go back 
to Britain, but I will never come back here. This is not the right field that I wanted to come. So the person who came to airport to pick us, she took us to her humble local house. I was unpacked my humble luggage at her, you know, the guest house, guest room. Room itself was just like a burning heat. Wall, hot. Floor, hot. Chair, hot. Bed, hot. Everything was hot and hot and hot. I didn't know what to do. There was no electricity, no cold water. I talked to myself, wow, I have to stay here for 21 days. How can I survive here for 21 days? But there was no way, no way for me to go back to Britain earlier because it was a charted plane. There was no seat available, no possible to change the seat, the date. So one night, one day, look like one month a year, I, I felt. So every day when I wake up, I checked calendars. Okay, today, one day passed. Then second day, I checked again. Today, I'm survived for two days. So I checked every day to my calendars, three days and four days and five days, six days and seven days like that, 12 days and days and days and days. It was longest time of my life, I tell you. It was the longest time of my, every day I, Confirm myself again and again. I will never come back to this country again. This is not my field. This is not my country. I will never come back here. The time I went back to Britain is finished. I will go at the field. So finally, my departure date, April. 1985, 21st day, the last day of my staying in the Cambia. I came to the airport very, very early, far five to six hours earlier than check in. I came to the airport, I was sitting for the plane coming. And then I talked to myself again and again, the time I go back to Britain, I will forget of this country anymore. I cannot come here. And I talked to myself. Then suddenly I felt, well, Lord, you know my heart. I have committed to become missionaries for a long time ago. You know my heart, Lord. I'm not joking. I'm here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm listening to you, you know. But this country is not the right place for my family to come. This is too hot. Okay, if I'm a single, yes, Lord, I can come as a single man. But you know, my wife, my two girls, they're in Britain. They cannot survive here. You know, Lord, right? I was talking to my God. I was, I was sitting there waiting for the plane coming, check in. Then suddenly, was a very, very clearly, I had a sense that the Lord, that Lord was speaking to me. He said, boy, you have come here by airplane, straight, nonstop airplane, only seven hours. But do you not know, 100 years ago, missionary who came to your country, all the way from USA, they across the Pacific Ocean for five months. 
was a very, very simple sense that the Lord was speaking to me. Then in the airport, I knelt down again. In the middle of this, I knelt down. It was not because there was that picture is not me, but just like this, this position, I knelt down in the airport saying that, okay, Lord. I will be back. I will come back here. The time I said that, uncontrollable tears, uncontrollable tears, tears and tears. And then thinking of my wife and my two girls in Britain, I felt so, so sorry to them. And all the way back to Britain, in the plane, I cried and cried and cried. And finally, I get back to my wife, to my girls, and my mission center. And uh, they were waiting for me. My wife, my two girls, they're waiting for me. They said, Honey, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. And my two girls, daddy, welcome back, welcome back. Well, they're so delighted. And my wife humbly asked me, honey, how was Africa? What did I say to her? What did I say to her? I was very simply responded. Well, uh, yeah, Africa was good. She said, was it not hot? I said, well, it was okay. It was a bearable. And then to my two girls, they said, Daddy, are we going down to Africa? Wow, we're going down to Africa. So they were so excited, not doing anything about Africa. We're going down to Africa. They were shouting and shouting. Then, we packed our things. They don't know about Africa, Gambia, but I knew. So, in our mission, so we go, we went down to Africa all the way from Britain, live in Africa. We put on African dress day and night. Of course, that time, no power, no running water. It was very, very difficult experience. Very, very difficult experience. Moreover, African creatures, these things, African mosquito, they loved Korean blood too much, especially my girls, day and night, they're the mosquito bitten. I don't know what happened. Every mosquito bitten, only for my girls, they get boiled. I think they scratch too much. Every mosquito bitten. You can see their face everywhere. More bitten and the boiled. And we put the blue, you know, in the whole body to make it dry. We thought we would die. But this lady, this Korean lady, you will see how she changed. This lady in Africa, she just became like an African lady. She loved African dance. She enjoys African dance. And uh, you see the same person, this lady, and this lady is the same person. You can see, you can imagine this lady and this lady is the same. And then myself, this man, Korean man, that was his daily passion. It was a daily passion. And uh, when it's a rain, we collected rain waters like that. And even when we are eating with the local people, myself, 
Can you see the half naked man? But at times, all my family together, same house, my wife and myself and my two girls, all of us, at the same time, we were attacked by Maria. It was a difficult, difficult time. And then while she was suffering with malaria, local yeah. people, yeah. Indian, yeah. African local people, they are so kind. Yeah. They were such a kind, you know, kind heart. And they came and they know that our family we were suffering by malaria. They come with a sympathy heart. With the tears, they said, you are not Africans. Why do you leave? Here? Why do you take this life? Your country is not like this. Why do you leave here? Now, ministry. We, by God's grace, none of my family, they died. All of us, we were survived. By God's grace, African weather was bearable. Initially, it was it looked so hot, but as we lived, it was okay for us. Because we have the same human body, the same human beings. Why not us? We were able to live together with an African. So then I opened my house widely. I said, local people, especially young people, anybody want to come to my house, you're welcome to come. So we open our door, our house widely open. Every day in the morning till evening, local people, especially young people who came to my house. So it was a very excited, very excited. I sat down with them. Every time they came, I opened the Bible together with them. I start read Bible. Day and night. We read Bible. We read Bible. And then people coming regularly. Yesterday they came. Today, they are most of them, all of them Muslim. Muslim young people, they coming. You know, some of them, of course, they verbally say that. They said, I believe in Jesus Christ. They said, then when we, when I taught some songs, they sang together with us, with me. So, 1988, I remembered. Let's have a Sunday service in my house. So, I wrote all hymn in my with, with my own hands, handwriting chart. And uh, every day, every Sunday, 11 o'clock, I put notice board saying that 11 o'clock on Sunday morning, that is a Sunday morning, Sunday worship gathering at Mr. Yu's house. So the local boys and girls, they came to my house at 11 o'clock every Sunday. So we, did Sunday service exactly like a Korean way, Korean style. Invocation and hymns. And uh, you see that you, can you see, I put on necktie because I thought there was on Sunday. So in Korean church on Sunday, every pastors we are supposed to wear the neckties, formal in a suit. But it, because of Africa, we can, I, I couldn't wear a suit, but at least necktie. So every Sunday morning and evening, I preached young people, they gathered. I taught traditional hymns, like, you know, the very, very traditional hymns from the hymn books. I taught them. And then local young boys and girls, 
they just, they were saying exactly what I taught. God is so good. God is so good. Jesus loves me. This I know. You see this simple, very slow temp and the traditional hymns I taught. Then, few months later, there are some strange people start to come to attend the Sunday service. Then their way of talking, their way of singing, their way of presenting is different from other local Gambians. I said, where are you from? They said, I am from Ghana. I'm from Nigeria. I'm from Salarian. I'm from Kenya. Oh my, oh, what did, said, are you Christian? They, yes, of course we are Christians. In the Gambia, we couldn't see many churches, but I saw, I heard there's a service on Sunday. So we came to this place. I was so encouraged to have them in my house church. Then I asked them to teach on Sunday school class, making class to class. After the Sunday sermon, they did Sunday school class and group grouping. And then young man or young woman from Ghana, from Salarian, from Nigeria, from Kenya, they took the Sunday school class and they start to teach. Sooner or later, when we start to sing, suddenly the singing, the fashion, or singing, the way of singing, getting changed. Because while we are singing, the people in the church, young people, they stood up and they started start to dance. I never did it in the church, in Korean church. Of course, on Sunday, dancing with, no. So we are very, very solemn way sitting like this. But the people from Ghana, from Nigeria, from Salarian, from, from Kenya, they are starting, they're standing and they're clapping and they're dancing and they're praising the Lord. I was confused, what, do, what should I do? I could not stop them. And all the local Gambian young people, they following their ways of worshiping. Oh my goodness. And then suddenly the church worship atmosphere changed so life. And then people are dancing and singing and clapping and joy, even when the time of offerings, they're offering with the dancing. We never did in Korea. I was confused, what should I do? And then when you go out to the local villages, you know, the local boys and girls who are not coming to church, they are singing. Muslim young people, they don't sing, but they are singing on the street. They said, hiya, 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 lip Jesus, hiya. What are they singing? What the mighty God we serve. I have all my church young people, they are singing that song. Even local young people, local children, they heard from our church members. Then I said, where did you learn these songs? They said, you see our church Sunday school teacher, Ghanaian Sunday school teacher, Kenyan Sunday school teachers, Nigerian Sunday school teacher, she or he taught us. From that time, our way of worshiping, way of service is completely changed like African ways. Service become very live, very joyful, very, very joyful service. Even sometimes it took three, four hours. My time, no longer than one and a half hours. But when they came and then African, neighboring African people, they have joined. Our the length of service 
become much, much longer. But people, they enjoy the service. They won't stay in the church. They won't sing more song. Oh my goodness. That time, I realized, wow, there is a way. There is a way of service. There is a way of worshiping the Lord. My way, my Korean way, my Korean style was not fit to these people. I thought my way would be okay for them, but African people is different. They, they love to dance. They love to, you know, I tried to make their rhythms, but my way of following the rhythm, it didn't fit. Their way of rhythming, very, very rhythmic people. We are so different. That time I realized even some Ghanaians, we, we, we learned, we learned over two years of local languages. We were still struggling to speak in local language fluently. But some people from Ghana, some people from Nigeria, some people from Kenya, English speaking countries, some people from, from Salarians, they came as your teachers, they came as your workers, but they didn't go for proper local language study. But they start to speak Mandinka language fluently. They, they start to speak Wolof language fluently. I was so surprised. How did you, where did you learn that language? They said, from the local people. Just living with local people, I learned from them. We, in the classroom, we did two years, one and a half years, one year, we studied, but we're still struggling to speak in local language. But these people, with understandable way, they speak local language fluently to local people. I realized, aha. You are the right people. You are the right people who can do the job. You are the right people. Yes, we, we can, but your way of communicating, your way of presenting, your way of worship is much, much more effective than ours. So we, try to closing our life. We try to, we decided to hand over our ministry to local young people who come to church. So called who been with us over 10 years and who confessed Jesus as their saviors, who confessed as a Sunday school teachers who confessed that they are sincere Christians. So we handed over my house to them, to the churches. We handed over my centers to the local churches. Even we handed over our car to the local churches. Even we handed over our telephones to the local church. Okay, it's your turn to carry on. It's your turn to do the job. Now we're going back to Korea. You do it. You are the best people. You are the most, most suitable people, suitable people to do the job for these people. We did early. We did with a hard work. One church, we were struggling with one church, two churches. African neighboring lay believers, teachers, or workers, they're not missionaries, but they started to their own house groups. They started to extend another house groups. It was amazing. We were amazing. We were amazed to see them. Now, 
you've been hearing about several hours from previous speakers, from the many resource people, even just before my session, my brother Rolly, he was sharing about Paul, he was sharing about African churches, the duties of African churches, suitabilities of, of African churches and African missionary. I agreed. I fully agreed. Yes, it is your turn to play. It is your turn to take this job. Even if you see, even the continent of Africa, African continent itself, northern part of Africa is Muslim dominated. How nice if you people can take responsibility to reach to those people. We, as a foreigners, as a Koreans, somehow many, many more hindrances. Let's say, let's say if we go to Japan, let's say, if you go to China, if I go to China myself, of course, apparently we look like Japanese, we look like Chinese. If I go to China right now, I can read Chinese newspaper, almost half of Chinese newspapers. I never stayed, I never stayed in China, but we call similar culture. Similarities, cultural similarities. We will be much, much easy way to learn Chinese, to learn Japanese, to learn Mongolians. If you go near, nearby Korea, you know, that's why thinking of North Africa, African continent, North Africa remaining unevangelized as Muslims, who would be the best people to go there? Think about you believe the, the Lord, you believe the Lord, I believe Jesus Christ is the same to you and same to me. He's my God as well as yours. He's my savior as well as yours. The Lord gave us great commission, not only to me, to you two. We have equal obligation to obey this great commission. So the Lord speaking to you, my dear people, my dear churches in Africa, it's your turn to pray. It's your turn to take over this job. It's your turn to take responsibility to reach out to the Northern African continent, even beyond Middle East, or even Central Asia, even further. You have so many, many Christian believers in, in African continent. So many, many big or small churches in African continent. The Lord speaking to you now. You are the most suitable people to do the job at this moment. This is not my word, but this is from the Lord. He's speaking to you. Just leave as a Korean man, simply responded his calling, not knowing about mission. Even that time, when I get to, when I committed myself to become missionary, the person in front, he didn't explain, explain to me at all like this. But the Lord simply wore to me, wore to me, if I do not become missionary, that was a simple. But this time, how many, guest speakers, how many resource persons have been speaking to you many different ways. Now, it's your turn, it's your turn to respond. It's a simply, it's your turn to take this responsibility. This is coming from my heart. I don't want to give you any kind of, you know, written kind of lectures or like, but I'm just, the reason I'm sharing this from bottom of my heart, from my 
practical experience I'm sharing this. You have many more gifted than myself, ourselves. You are very, very gifted people. This is your time. This is your time to play. This is from the Lord. This word, this challenge is from the Lord. I hope and I believe you respond this calling. May the Lord bless all of you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for hearing my humble testimony. Okay, thank you, uh, Byung-gook, uh, your wonderful um, testimony. And can you just stop sh screen sharing? Okay, stop screen share. Okay, so it's now time to have a question and answer time. So if you, if anyone, any of you wants to make any comments and any ideas and if you have any questions, please feel free to do so. Now I can see all of you. Nice to see all, but even only names, but I didn't see your face. Okay, so Rose, so raise up your hands. Yeah, please don't mute your microphone. No, I was just giving a clap. Oh. Eh? Yeah, cool. All right. Yeah, many people make a comment on the chat box. Okay, Reverend Dr. Joseph, do you, do you want to say something? Can you hear me, Lev Ledeun? Yes. yes, yes, I can hear you. Uh, would you like us to make uh, some remarks as you close, or we have another thing? Yeah, sure. Thank you. We had requested the bishop to make the closing remarks. Mm -hmm. uh, before this, he had some internet problems. I don't know whether he has corrected that, bishop. Well, in his absence, we had planned uh, to hear the same remarks from two senior clergy. Venerable Joyce and Venerable Murage, kindly give us your closing remarks. Uh, Dr. Monywa, thank you. Thank you very much. I am not sure that I have a lot, but I just um, text and said that this is a very touching testimony from Leveland Yo. And Sometimes we have had an attitude or a thought within ourselves that these other people don't go through some of the things that we go through in terms of struggling to follow the call mm -hmm. and to keep to it. And this is an indicator that oh, we have to here. go through Sorry, there are some noises. How do I we have there? to go through can, can we continue mm -hmm. we have to go through some very continue. hard circumstances yes very difficult and hard circumstances and this testimony is very Go on, sister. yes 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 I'm, I'm i'm just saying it was so touching to see the first three days in the uk for dr yo I mean, for level and yo, and the sharing of bed with the whole family, all for the sake of the gospel of Christ. So I think this is so touching. I had actually uh, posted a question 
And now that he keeps saying, this is your turn, this is your turn, maybe what exactly does he mean? Is it that, uh, we, uh, what is it exactly? What is it exactly? Otherwise, this has been a touching testimony. The gospel must be preached and the statement comes very fresh. Oh, to me, if I don't preach the gospel. So I think it will touch and encourage us it will give us strength to go a little more further and the commitment levels are least. So thank you so very, very much. It is such a great talk. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, do you wanna answer her question? Her question? Yeah. Okay, and uh, as you heard or as you know, the previous former missionary sending country or church, Western church. If you go into Western church, almost not only decreasing, but almost missionaries are disappearing now from Western countries. So Korea, I'm Korean. Jap is of course Korean Australian, but we Korean church, statistically, we are the second largest missionary sending countries in the world. But now Korean church, the numbers, missionary numbers are de decreasing dramatically. And then as there are so many mission field crying for new workers, they're crying for new workers. They open their field, they used to work on mission field, but they expecting to have new workers from Western country, from Korea, from some other part. But the mission is not coming into. So now people say, where are the new missionaries? Even Central Asia, Middle East, North Africa, even the South Africa, Southeast African mission field, they're crying for new workers. So I said, why? What about African missionaries? has been hearing, there are so many churches, there are so many believers, there are so many potential young people who can speak English fluently, not like Korean people. <laughs> they have so many multicultural background with young people. Why can't they go? Why can't you send them? That's why I said, it's your turn to act means, please send your young people to those places. They are crying for new workers. Mission is not completed yet. So it's a very, very desperate need now. If you go into Western country, formerly mission sending countries, wow. I can't even describe how desperate. So this is very, very clear. The Lord is opening new doors from Africa in terms of sending missionaries out of Africa or even in, in, in Africa. So that's why I said, please take this responsible now, African church. Would you please take responsible that you can replace the missionary or you can fill the gap where the missionary needed. That is my challenge. That is my, the message actually this time. You are more suitable than any other nations in all of the world. Okay, thank you. So um, there's another question. So Ken Doid, um, so he said, that's a powerful testimony, but do you have any regrets in missionary journey in Africa? Not a regret, not a regret. I personally, I only realized the limit of my you know, so I would say suitabilities or my strength. Of course, nobody is perfect, but as a missionary working in Africa, I not comparable, but what if African missionary working with us, he would have done much greater job than myself. That is, I don't regret my life in Africa, but anyways, that is the based on my realization as a you know, reality, 
wow, African brothers, sisters, they have a great, great potential to be a, to become a missionaries. Yeah, that was my point, actually. I only did my role, humbly my roles. That's why now I'm able to share about my humble testimony to other people. Okay, uh, so, me, yeah, sure, yeah. Allow, allow me to request Vedana Bumurage, who was also prepared to make uh, the closing remarks. Now, today is our last day. So we have re we had requested the two senior two, two senior clergy to give us the closing remarks. Venerable Murage. Mm -hmm. Yes, Dr. Ali. Yeah, so so what, what have come out uh, from Hello? Can you hear me? We Hello? can hear you. We can hear you. Yes. What have, what have come out, Dr. Ali? What has come out is the passion, the risk taking and the urgency for us to go out and evangelize. Mm -hmm. A very great talk for us. And we are very grateful for the program. The, it has opened our hearts, our minds, and we are charged and challenged to do mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we can uh, be able to see that the bishop could be allowed or the president of the Mother's Union uh, kindly give us the closing remarks. If you can hear us, the president of the Mother's Union or the bishop, we have seen uh, your icon. Kindly say something if you can. Uh, allow me to say something on their behalf now that uh, they are not able to communicate. First yes. of all, we would like to acknowledge Work International for giving us the opportunity to learn about mission. Thank you so much. We acknowledge you. Thank you so much. You. We'd also like to acknowledge the attendees of this imperative course in mission. Thank you, our clergy. Thank you, our lay leaders. Thank you, our lady at lunch. We recognize you. We are now informed and we are ready to start or to enhance our mission in Jerusalem and to the rest of parts of the world. We are ready. We have been energized. We have been rejuvenated. Amen. We are now ready. We thank God for also giving us the opportunity to do what we have been able to do in all those sessions. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Let the you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you, everyone, uh, for your uh, participation. And it, it has been really great privilege for us to ha um, spend time with you last five weeks. And uh, I trust that um, our partnership will continue for the sake of Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, we trust that um we work together and collaborate together uh to reach out to unrich people who never heard of the uh, grace and love of god and finish the task together so and um another one last announcement i want to make so graduation ceremony will be taking place uh i'm not really sure about the date some some days in april in kenya so one of our um representative will be there to celebrate together so uh, we hope to see you again and we hope to work together and partner together 
uh, to complete the task of Great Commission. So can um, Reverend Byung-Guk Yu, would you be able to end up entire session um, by prayer? Okay, anyway, additionally, I'm so thankful to all of you, especially Bishop and all the leaders and participants for being with us for almost several weeks. This is all we, we have seen through the screen, but my dream and my hope, one day we will be able to see face to face. And I can't even share about my other humble experience from Korean church experience, Korean mission experience to you then you can take very good kind of lessons from them. Then anyways, I'm praying that one day I will be appeared in front of you in real. So may the Lord would give us this time, you know, in the near future. Okay, let me close in prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for being our Lord and our God. You have given us this good news. You have saved us from eternal death to everlasting life. Lord, this is your gift. Lord, we have received this gift freely. And you said, we have received freely and give freely. Yes, Lord. We will submit your grace commission. Use us, Lord. All this Anglican church in Kenya, use this denomination, Lord. They can be a missionary sending denominations through their hard work, through their commitment, through their ob obedience. Hundred and thousand missionaries will be sent out from Anglican church from Kenya. Lord, use this church and speak every leaders whom we met through the screen, Lord. Bless their lives. Bless their ministry, Lord. Even though we may not see, we don't see in face, but Lord, in the near future, we may be able to see face to face, in person. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for gathering us together as your servant. Thank you for helping us to work for your kingdom's sake, Lord. Keep using us, Lord. Help us to keep obeying your great commission, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much.